Welcome to the ADF Insider Essential Series, which demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks and techniques that you will require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration, you will see how to populate a list in a select one choice from a different data control. My name is Frank Limpius and I'm from the Oracle JDeveloper and ADF Product Management team. The use case is to populate a component, a column in a table or an attribute field in a form with a select one choice list so that users can select from a choice of values to update the column or the attribute. To populate the list we want to use data coming from a different data control which makes sense if the business service technology that you use to query the data is different from the technology that you use to update whatever the data store is that you need to update with the selection. If for instance the data control that you use is built with ADF business components and the list data control also has business components then it doesn't make sense at all to have two different data controls for that. But if the list data is coming for instance from a web service and the updated data is going through business components then this makes perfect sense. So how do we implement that? Well first of all it's business as usual. So we create the target table using the data control which we use to update the database. And then we replace the column or the attribute field with a select one choice, which then we populate with the data from a different data control. What we need to make sure is that the value property of the select one choice points to the target data control and not to the data control that we populate the list with. So let's have a look. This is the runtime view of what we're going to build. So one of the columns in this table is a list of values and this list of values allow me to choose a value that then is used to update the underlying target. Now you don't see any difference between using a select list that is populated from the same data control compared to a select list that is populated from a different data control of a different business service. And that's good because the end user doesn't really care for where the data is coming from. All that an end user would care for is that the data that he could select actually is of the same type and valid to use to update the table row or the form field. So let's have a look at the implementation side. This is the design time view of the example that I just showed. As you can see in the data controls panel I do have two different data controls. For simplicity reason I built both ADF data controls with ADF business components but in reality if you chose the approach of having a different data control providing the list values in a list of value then that should be something different like a web service data control or an EGB or GPA data control or a POJO data control. So to build my example I start dragging the department's view collection as a table onto the page. I could also choose a form if I wanted to build the same example with an input form. So in this case what I want to do is I want to replace the location ID input text field which currently renders the column uh, with a select one choice. I need to make sure though that this string which is a value property string of the input tax field always remains the same. JDeveloper will take care of that automatically but just for the sake of being on the safe side I copy this into the clipboard so I have a choice to compare what the string later on is with a string that I have when I started developing the solution. So now I'm ready to delete the input tax field so the column no longer has a renderer. Now I go to the expanded department's view one collection node, go to the location of the attribute and drag this back in to the column field and this time I choose a select one choice. So that gives me the list choice for the users to select the value. In the dialog here I now have the chance to select the list data source and the list data source is where the data comes from that you populate the list of values with and this also 
only works if the dynamic list option is chosen. If I provide a fixed list, then in my metadata I can provide static values and value keys that are represented to the users. If I select the model-driven list of values, then this would assume that the ADF Business Components model has a list of value defined on the attribute. So in my case, I want to simulate the fact that I use a different data control, that I use a web service data control or AGB data control to populate the list. So I need to create a reference to the other data control. And I do have both data control listed in here. I choose the collection in the different data control that I want to use to populate the list. I make sure that the updatable attribute is mapped to the list attribute that provides the same type of data. And in the display attribute, I can choose whatever I want. In this case, I want to see city. You see there's an entry for select multiple entries, which is good if you want to see the location ID and the city name in the selection list. In my case, city is good enough. This adds the select one choice. And as you can see, it's smart enough to tell that it has to update the row bindings location ID attribute. So it puts exactly the same string in here that I previously had with the input text component. Just to show you that, I paste in the previous string now, and you see there's no change in there. So JDevelopper is very smart about this. If this wasn't a table, but if that was a form, you have to be aware of that deleting the attribute, the input text component in the form will also create uh, a deletion for the attribute binding. So in this case, deleting the form attribute would not go through the visual editor. You would have to go to the source code editor and just remove the markup so that you can remain or keep the um, attribute binding to update the target data control. But beside of that, it's exactly the same. OK, to summarize, so what I did is I created the table from the target collection, so the collection that I used to update the database. And then I replaced the column or the form field with a select one choice, making sure that the value property string, the expression string that is used to update the target source, remains the same. As you've seen, JDBOP is very smart, so it makes sure that the string is always the right string. But just to be sure that it is the right string, it's a good and recommended option to copy the existing string into the clipboard and then paste it back later on. To get more and to learn more about Oracle JDevop and ADF, go to the Oracle JDevop website on OTN, which also is mirrored through oracle.com slash technology slash JDEF. There you get downloads of the JDevop software, more tutorials, references to different websites with um, topics that help you building applications, including this ADF Insider Essential Series. There's an ADF Insider Series. There's ADF Code Corner. There are several blogs that we reference from there. So everything you need to become successful with Oracle ADF and Oracle JDevapper.